Yo, what is up guys? James Carter TV here for yet another edition of my 32 teams in 32 days 2015 NFL season preview videos for the 2015 NFL season. Today, we are talking about the New York Jets. Yesterday, we'll talk, we talked about the New York Giants. I'm low on them, and uh, New York Fred's going to keep getting beaten down because I'm low on the New York Jets too. But at least with Jets fans, this should not, be as a, this should not come as a huge surprise to them. It shouldn't. Uh, but it still will. I will still get hate for saying that they're not that good, even though they know, subconsciously at least, that you're really not that good. This is a team that went 4-12 last year, and you know that in the middle of last season when you were like 1-9, you know that, they, that you thought at least that they were going to be the worst team in the league, that they were going to have their first overall pick, that they stunk that they were horrible. Now, they ended up getting three more wins, being the Steelers, the Titans, and the Dolphins. Uh, but this is still not a very good team. This is a team that got blown out twice by the no-quarterback Buffalo Bills. That's what I like to call them. And, and, but also competed against the Patriots. I mean, the, the Jets are one of the most fascinating teams under the Rex Ryan era. Because even though they're bad a lot of years, or at least maybe mediocre, Rex Ryan elevated their team to a better level than they were. The problem was Rex Ryan didn't know how valuable the quarterback position was to the NFL. And he had punk general managers that haven't drafted good players over the past number of years outside of a couple players on the defensive line. Uh, that's really what we're looking at. So let's look at the Jets strengths, weaknesses, uh, I'll give you my win-loss prediction, and we'll look at the toughness of their schedule. The strengths for this team, I just said it, the defensive line. Uh, we're talking about Muhammad Wilkerson, Sheldon Richardson, uh, De Damon Harrison, or Damon Harrison in the middle, and you drafted, it, it, really to me, um, you shouldn't have, but you drafted Leonard Williams out of USC. Yes, he was the best player on the board. I say, hey, draft something you need, especially when you're a team like the New York Jets, where you guys need players that can play right now and need to be out there. Now, actually, as it turns out, Leonard Williams will be out there immediately week one because of the suspension to Sheldon Richardson. But at the time, the Jets didn't know this. And I still think uh, they will regret not getting a, a pass rusher, but I'll get into that later. But these are three guys in Richardson, Harrison, and Wilkerson that are really good, especially Wilkerson and Richardson are elite at their position levels. It's a shame that Sheldon Richardson is going through the hell that he's going through because he's uh, not the best 3-4 defensive end in the uh, NFL. J.J. Watt holds that honor, but Sheldon Richardson is up there. Uh, and Muhammad Wilkerson, uh, opposite of him, is not bad. So th they're going to have to let one go. And now that you drafted Leonard Williams again, I think that was a mistake, but whatever. You drafted one of those kids, and now one of these guys has to go, and you're going to have to input another position there, but whatever. Now, the, the next strength, and this is the problem with this team. I mean, I don't even know if it's really a strength, to be honest with you, um, is their wide receiving core. Okay, now you have Eric Decker. Okay, he's good. Uh, but then, Brandon Marshall and Jeremy Curley and Devin Smith. Okay, Brandon Marshall's a guy. Okay, guys, you got to listen to me here. Yes, he was a guy that was even on my top 10 wide receiver list last year. But he really didn't do much last year. And you can say, and I know Jets fans are going to say this. Oh, it's because of Jay Cutler. It's because Jay Cutler didn't do well. It's because he was with Mark Tressman. Okay, fine. He's going from Jay Cutler, who you wish you had. You wish you had Jay Cutler. He is going from Jay Cutler to Geno Smith and Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, come on, guys. You wish you had Jay Cutler. If you thought he produced poorly with Jay Cutler, he's about to hook up with Geno uh, under 3,000 yards Smith. And Ryan, interception, Patrick, or Fitzpatrick. I mean, come on, guys. So, I don't know what you're going to get from him. Jeremy Curley uh, can be decent at times, uh, but can't be relied upon. It is not going to propel the talent level of Geno Smith, I'll tell you that much. And Devin Smith has an injury issue, seeing that he may not be ready for week one. Uh, so, their second best strength is weak. Uh, and for maybe their third best strength, I mean, you, you could talk about their corners. Fine, let's talk about their corners. 
You have a great corner, a great corner, an elite corner in Daryl Revis. Okay, good. Now, you have Antonio Cromartie, who I have been hearing, and you probably been hearing this too, is struggling in training camp. He sounds like, okay, he's nearing the end of his rope. Now, we're talking about Buster Screen, who you added from the Cleveland Browns in free agency. Was decent there, can make a big play, but can also sometimes be a liability even as a slot corner. You have D. Milliner, who you drafted in the 2014, or was it 2013? 2013, I believe, NFL draft. Uh, yeah, it should have been 2013. Who, who can also be decent at times, but... Uh, there, there's no really... I was putting the word good on any of these players. I mean, they can be decent. Screen can be decent. Tony Cromartie can be decent. D. Miller can be decent. But no one's going to really be a consistent uh, good thing for you. The, the good thing for you, though, is that in your division, in the AFC East, you don't have to cover a lot of great uh, wide receivers. Now, there's one up and coming in the name of Jarvis Landry in Miami, but that's really the best one. And how much, of, oh, and Sammy Watkins in Buffalo, but no one's throwing the ball in Buffalo. They're running it 24-7. So looking for you, you can get away with this. Okay, it's fine. Now let's talk about your weaknesses, and we have a lot to get through. Uh, let's start with the obvious one, the quarterback position. It's a weakness. Geno Smith is uh, is a detriment. He He's an issue. He's a problem. And not only on the field, now he's a problem off the field. I mean, honestly, this guy, are you kidding me? But not only is he a problem on the field, but now he's giving you problems off the field, in the locker room, throwing the football at home under the express, uh, uh, not under the consent of his doctor. I mean, going against his will and the will of his uh, head coach. I mean, now he's giving you two headaches, one on the field, one off. He's not playing. Uh, he'll play. Every now and then, Todd Bowles sounds like he's just sick of Geno Smith. So let's just go ahead and talk about the guy that I think is going to end up playing more, and that's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, I actually like Ryan Fitzpatrick more than most. This is a guy that, to me, led the Texans, uh, not to their record they were, but led them to being a decent team last year. He posted a 95 quarterback rating last year. I mean, this is a guy that when you can have a good offensive line around him, when you can have good weapons around him, he will lose you games, but you could post 500 with Ryan Fitzpatrick. No better. Not a win better. Uh, but you could post 500. Uh, actually, the Texans went 9-7, but remember, some of those games were without Ryan Fitzpatrick. So, lucky for them. Now, if I say that, then why do I hate this team? Well, you don't have that offensive line. The Texans have one of the best offensive lines in the league uh, with the likes of uh, Dwayne Brown on their offensive line. Do you guys know? All right, you guys have DeBrickashaw Ferguson, whose play has been going down, down, down over the past number of years. Uh, Nick Mangold, okay, he's good. Then he goes to hell. All right, we're talking about Gia, how you say this again? I forgot, I almost forgot, Gia McKinney or Gio Camini uh, on the right side. Bruce, or, uh, yeah, that, that's the name, Bruce Gio McKinney. Uh, Armini, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it. At your right tackle. Willie Colon at right guard. You signed James Carpenter out of Seattle. He was the worst player on their offensive line. He was the worst player on their offensive line. They're happy to get rid of him. Um, Brian Winters is a backup guard. Abushi is a backup guard. These are bad players. These are bad players on your offensive line. Even if Geno Smith can do anything, uh, he's, he's not going to be able to have enough time to do anything. And then you don't even have tight ends. I don't know why Jeff Cumberland is in the league. Jason Morrow is looking as if he's a bust, although I'll give him time. Zach Sudfield is a joke. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, you're talking about an offensive line and a tight end. They're not going to block anything. They're not going to block for you. They're not going to block anything. Um, so that's a big weakness. I, I hate your running backs. Now, Chris Hyvery can be good at times. I'll give him credit because he's running behind this bad offensive line. Uh, but Bilal Powell and Steven Ridley... Uh, Zach Stacy, I, I like the name, but it doesn't sound like he's doing too well in training camp. It doesn't sound like he'll, uh, doesn't sound like he'll be starting, so why should I care? And then Daryl Richardson, why are you taking all these Rams running backs? So, I, I don't know what to make of those running backs. 
Now let's talk about the defense. I'm hearing so many guys talk about the Jets defense is stacked. The Jets defense is stacked. No, it would have been if you would have drafted Vic Beasley and, and, and with your first pick or in the in the 24. Uh, what, what what's the damn year? 2015 NFL draft. Your outside linebackers blow. You have Calvin Pace and Quinton Copels. These are two guys that will never. Uh, Calvin Pace maybe 10 years ago, or not 10 years ago, but 5 years ago, or actually even 2 years ago, he could have got you 10 plus sacks. Now he's done. He's 34 years old. He, he, he's going down every year. He, he's finished. Quentin Copels will get you 6 and a half. No more. All right, so you're looking at a guy that's not going to do anything. Jason Babin, I like the name. Doesn't sound like he's even going to make the team. Uh, Lorenzo Malden, who you drafted out of, out of Louisville, well, he better perform because he's going to need to pick up the slack. Tra Trevor Riley out of Utah, fifth-round pick last year. Uh, can he finally produce something? We saw absolutely nothing from him last year. You had Inning Bali, but he punched Geno Smith right in the sucker, so that's already finished and done there. Your inside linebackers, I don't like them. Uh, you have Harris and Davis in the middle. Davis is okay. Harris, uh, no. You sign Aaron Henderson from the Vikings. They couldn't have been happier. All right, they don't want him. They're happy you got him. Um, in the back there, you have Calvin Pryor, who's inconsistent as can be, and Marcus Gilchrist, who I actually like. Um, but there's too many issues and holes, especially on the offensive line. The linebackers just aren't very good. You should have looked at a Vic Beasley. Yes, Leonard Williams was the best player on the freaking board. You should have gotten a damn outside linebacker. You tried to get some agency. They didn't want to come. You got your Daryl Revis. That's nice. That's cute. That's great. That's it. That's the only thing I'm looking at. And maybe Brandon Marshall, but with what quarterbacks? Uh, so those two, those are the only additions. Yes, Leonard Williams is an addition, but what will Leonard Williams give you more than uh, Sheldon Richardson gave you last year. You're not going to get more production. You're going to get less. Maybe eventually you'll get more. It won't be much more. You guys threaten to be the worst team in the league with the best, honestly, with the best defensive line in the league. You guys threatened to have the worst record in the league. So don't talk to me about your defensive line. We've already proven that that means nothing. Uh, we've proven that now. So... Um, I, I'm sorry. Now, with that said, what is my win-loss prediction? Well, let's look at the schedule. I think the schedule gives you some favors here, all right? You went 4-12 last year, as I said, with wins against Oakland, Tennessee, Miami, and Pittsburgh. Somehow, you beat Pittsburgh. Even God doesn't know how you beat Pittsburgh, but whatever. This year, you find yourselves going up against... The AFC South. Um, this is a good uh, matchup for you. You host Jacksonville. You host Tennessee. Those could be two wins for you right there. So that's nice and kind to you. And at Houston, I, I don't like Houston, so it wouldn't surprise me if you guys beat them. You also have, a, I think, an easy game versus Washington. You go to Oakland. Uh, you host Buffalo. Now, they did thrash you, and I mean thrash you two times last year, but maybe you'll have more better luck this year. So right there, I just counted six games that are very winnable. Oh, and you host Cleveland. Um, so you guys, even though I do not like your team, you guys have an easy schedule. If you guys are like 2-14, and 3-13, I will be shocked because this is a very manageable schedule to me. And for that, your best case scenario is, Todd Bowles is a defensive wizard, and he's able to turn Calvin Pace and, and Quentin Copels in, in, into a formidable duo uh, of outside linebackers. Don't think that'll happen, but it's possible. Your worst case scenario, Geno stinks. Um, Fast Patrick stinks. It's a, it, uh, it, it's a charade. It's a charade. It blows. It sucks. But I don't know how you're uh, even worse than last year. So 4-12. and 12. My prediction, 6 and 10. There are still issues in abundance here. Find yourself a franchise quarterback or you will not compete in this league. Do it. Geno Smith is not good, although I guess he could go into finally the positive touchdown. 
ratio if he plays. I don't know if Todd Bowles wants to play him. He, Todd Bowles is talking about saying, well, if Ryan Fitzpatrick is playing well, Gino is going to stay on the bench. So Todd Bowles doesn't like him. Uh, there's, it, uh, Shadow Merson has issues, drama, you know, it could be 4-12. and 12. It really could. I'm predicting 6-10. and 10. I, I can't put my big faith into this defense as some of you are doing. Their linebackers aren't very good. Their safeties are okay at best. Their corners, there's one that's really good and the other ones are suspect. It's not a stacked defense, guys. It's not even close. It's not even close to a stacked defense. In fact, real quick, where did the Jets uh, place in, in, in points allowed real quick? Geno Smith, although he's bad, uh, he only had 13 interceptions, probably had like another five fumbles with that last year. So, uh, yes, that's a little more turnovers than you would like, but I guess it wasn't just straight up awful um, in terms of the amount of turnovers. Let's see real quick how many points or where the Jets ranked last year in points allowed and see if that changes my opinion at all. If they were bad, then I'm gonna then I won't care because um, th th that's gonna tell me well if they were bad last year, they didn't they improved a little bit. Their defense will improve a little bit, and this is with the best defensive line in the league. Damon Harrison or Damon Harrison, I know black people like to pronounce it Damon. Uh, Damon Harrison, Muhammad Wilkerson, and Sheldon Richardson, three guys, best defensive line in the freaking league, and you still. We're almost last in the NFL. You still almost have the first overall pick. Keep that in mind. All right, so in terms of points allowed, the New York Jets placed... Like 25th or 24th. Okay, so they weren't actually that bad. Um, but their offense couldn't put up any points. Uh, you, you'll improve on that number. That number will be improved. I don't like your offensive line, though. Uh, I don't like your linebackers. Uh, their safeties are okay. And ultimately, it'll be 6-10. and 10. Find yourself a quarterback, and there will be plenty to pick from. Now, the problem is there won't be any that's like, wow, this guy is really good. There won't be any of those. It's going to be like 2014 draft. Where we're going to have four guys like Manziel, Carr, Bridgewater, and Bortles. And your GMs and your coaches are going to have to decide. Alright, do we want this guy? Alright, we want him. That's what the situation is going to be like in 2014. Until next time, James Carter TV. I'm out. Peace.